اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ علی صلاۃ والسلام علی رسول ہی و صحب ہی اجمعین ربش رحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقد ملسانی یفقا کولی السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی نیم از فرا ان ٹو ڈے ان شاء اللہ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی دا فورٹینتھ چیپٹر آف گلوریس قرآن سورہ ابراہیم Surah has 52 verses and it was revealed at the later stage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam preaching in Makkah the name of the surah has been taken from verse number 35 where it says wa iz qala ibrahim and ibrahim alaihi salam said my lord make this city makkah secure but the name ibrahim is not the main topic discussed in the surah we can put the main themes into six parts Number 1 Surah talks about the divine revelation of the glorious Quran and how it leads mankind to light Number 2 it talks about prophethood and how they were rejected and ridiculed by the disbelievers and their outcome Number 3 Satan's promise and how he will leave his followers in the lurch Number 4 countless blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how people are ungrateful to him Number 5 Ibrahim alayhi salam's duas and in the last section the surah describes a comparison between the end result of believers and disbelievers at the day of judgment so let's begin let's talk about the important points of surah ibrahim in detail in verses 1 to 3 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying we have sent down the quran so that o muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam you might lead mankind towards the light and success and warn those who prefer the life of this world to the hereafter surah also says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers in the language of their own people so they could understand the message of quran sorry the message of allah clearly as we know torah was sent in hebrew and quran al hakim was sent in arabic former prophets were rejected despite their miracles verses 5 to 17 surah talks about when prophet musa and nuh alaihi salam conveyed the message of allah to their people and also when the people of ad and samud and others when they were invited to truth they denied their messengers and said you are no more than human beings like us bring your proof or any miracle the messengers of allah said we are humans like you and we can only bring miracles if allah wills we put our trust on allah and bear with patience then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his messengers victorious and destroyed the arrogant disbelievers and in the hereafter hell is in front of them verses 18 to 23 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the deeds of the wrong doers will be like ashes on which wind blows on a stormy day and scatters them they will not earn any reward on their good deeds because of their disbelief on the day of resurrection the weak one will blame the powerful leader of the world for their destruction and the powerful one they will blame allah astaghfirullah for their wrong doings and say that allah did not guide us when all the matter will be over satan will address to the people of hell saying that the promise of allah was true but do not blame me blame yourself i did not have any power on you i only invited you and you responded to my call now i deny your act of associating me as a partner of allah there is a painful punishment for the polytheist and wrongdoers on the other hand those who believed in the oneness of allah and his messengers and did the righteous deeds they will enter the gardens under which rivers flow and angels will greet them by saying salamun alaykum may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those amen when the surah talks about the parable of a goodly tree is like goodly world is like a goodly tree and talks about kalma tayyiba and kalma khabisa kalma tayyiba is referred to la ilaha illallah and the goodly world is like a goodly tree whose root is firmly fixed and its branches reach to the sky this is the case of iman 
which is firm in the heart of a believer and his deeds raise towards heavens day and night those who believe and keep on worshiping allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep them firm on the other hand evil world is like an evil tree uprooted from the surface of the earth with no stability surah also talks about the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the heavens and the earth he sends down the water from the sky and with it grows all the vegetation and fruits he has made the ships for you for your service so you can travel sun moon day night they are all at your service he is the one who gives you health fresh air to breathe in ability to work love ability to understand and reason he is the one who responds to your prayer and resolves your problems if you start counting the blessings of allah you will not be able to count and man is extremely ungrateful then in verses from 35 to 41 there are beautiful duas of prophet ibrahim alaihi salam he was extremely thankful to allah and he asked allah to make him and his offsprings grateful we will discuss his duas in our dua section then sura says that allah subhanahu wa taala gives respite to the wrong doers so do not consider that allah is unaware of what they are doing he just gives them time till the day of judgment in the last section of sura from verses 44 onward allah subhanahu wa taala says o rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam warn them of the day when the torment will come the earth and the heaven will be changed to a different earth and heaven have they not learned from the end of previous nations so quran clearly states that the only ilah worthy of worship is allah subhanahu wa taala virtues and benefits of reciting surah ibrahim narrated al bara radiyallahu anhu regarding allah saying in verse 27 where allah subhanahu wa taala says that allah will keep firm those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world and in the hereafter it is mentioned in the tafsir of ibn kathir that immediately after their death in their graves when the angels munkar and nakir will ask them three questions number 1 who is your lord number 2 what is your religion number 2 what do you say about this man muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was sent to you the believers will give the correct answers that my lord is allah my religion is islam and the man muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to us with clear signs and we believed in him while those who did not believe in the message of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will not be able to answer these questions may allah subhanahu wa taala keep us firm on his religion amen also it is narrated whoever recites surah ibrahim he will remain safe from insanity calamity poverty may allah subhanahu wa taala make us among those who learn from surah ibrahim amen the story of the building of the kaaba ibrahim alaihi salam left his wife a newborn baby ismail under a tree on the spot of zamzam at the highest place in the mosque with some dates and water during those days there were no one in makka nor was there any water ismail's mother followed him saying o oh, ibrahim where are you going leaving us in this valley he did not reply She repeated that to him many times but no reply then she asked has Allah commanded you to do so he said yes she said then he will not neglect us when he reached to the point where they could not see him he faced the kaaba and he invoked Allah by saying o our lord i have made some of my offsprings to dwell in an uncultivable valley by your sacred house in order that they may perform salat so fill some hearts among men with love towards them o allah provide them with fruits so that they may give thanks on the other hand when the water and dates finished hazrat hajra started feeling thirsty and the baby ismail became thirsty too and started crying so she started looking for water and help 
she ran between the mountains of Safa and Marwa seven times in search of water in distress. Then she saw an angel digging the earth with his heel and then all of a sudden water flowed. She drank and suckled her child. The angel said to her, don't be afraid of being neglected. This is the house of Allah which will be built by the bo this boy and his father. Soon the people from tribe of Jurham came and some of them became the permanent resident. Then Ismail -Islam learned Arabic from them. When he reached the age of puberty, they made him marry a woman from amongst them. After the death of Ismail's mother, Hazrat Hajar, Ibrahim -Islam came to see his family. But he didn't find Ismail. But he met his wife and asked, but about their living and about her husband, she complained and told him that they are living in hardship. And Hazrat Ibrahim said to her, when your husband comes, convey my salutation to him and tell him to change the threshold of your gate. When Ismail came, his wife told him about it. And he said to his wife, he was my father and he has asked me to divorce you. So go back to your people. After some time, Ismail -Islam married, married another woman and Ibrahim -Islam visited, them, visited them again. But second time again, Ismail -Islam wasn't there. So he asked his wife about her husband and their living. And she replied, we are prosperous and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with everything. She thanked Allah. Ibrahim -Islam made dua for them that, O oh Allah, bless their meat and water. Then he said to her, when your husband comes, tell him to keep the threshold of his gate. When Ismail -Islam came, his wife told him about it. And he said, he was my father and he has ordered me to keep you with me. Then after some time, Ibrahim -Islam visited them again. And he found Ismail alayhi salam. He was sitting near Zamzam and they greeted each other. Then he said, O oh Ismail, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered me to build a house here. Will you help me? He said, Yes, I will. Then they raised the foundation of the house. Ismail alayhi salam brought the stones and Ibrahim alayhi salam was building it. When the wall became high, Ismail -Islam brought this stone and Ibrahim -Islam stood over it and carried on building while Ismail -Islam was handing him the stones. Prophet Muhammad added, then both of them went on building and going round the Kaaba saying, O oh, our Lord, accept this service from us. Verily, you are the all hearer, the all knower. And this is the story of a sacred house, Gaba. Action points. Surah Ibrahim teaches us that we must follow the teachings of Quran to remove the darkness from our life. What is the darkness of life? It is lack of knowledge of true religion. It is lack of guidance. And Quran al-Hakim provides the guidance and light which enables the believer to lead his life according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandment. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, dunya mazraul akhira. Whatever we sow here, we will harvest it in the hereafter. So do not prefer this worldly life and its players over the hereafter. Surah teaches us that we must convey the message of Quran in the language of the people. So there should be trained scholars and teachers of Islam in every language so they can convey the message of Allah in the most effective manner, inshallah. Surah teaches us, be grateful to Allah. Verse 7 of Surah Ibrahim. Read it. It is close to my heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ista'azzana rabbukum la'in shakartum la'azidannakum. And when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will give you more. Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Say Alhamdulillah. 
if you are the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with loads of worldly delights, remember, it doesn't mean you are better than others. It is a test from Allah. So turn to Allah with humility, with recognition and with thankfulness. And if you're the one who is passing through the darkest night of your life, remember, it is a test from Allah. So turn to Allah with humility and be thankful for what you have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you in blessings and the light will overtake your worries and sufferings, sufferings inshallah. Learn from Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He was a grateful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn from the people of Musa, Nu, Ad, and Samud, how they were destroyed because of their disobedience and arrogance. Bear with patience. This is a message for everyone who walks in the footsteps of messengers of Allah and they preach. They will face rejection. They will face criticism and mockery. But patience and tawakkul, trust in Allah, are the keys of success. And pious and righteous will win at the end. Seek refuge from Satan. Satan is your open enemy. And take him as an enemy. Follow five steps, five key points to keep Satan away. Number one, be sincere in faith. Number two, whenever evil thought comes, say, Auzu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Say Bismillah because Satan runs away when Bismillah is said. And also do zikr and be in the company of righteous people. Remember the parable of goodly word? Ibn, in Ibn Hatam, it is said, someone asked Prophet وسلم, rich people will rise in ranks because of their wealth and because they spend in Allah's cause. Then Prophet وسلم, said, even if you pile up all the things in the world, they cannot reach the sky. I teach you something whose root is strong and whose branches are in the sky. Say La ilaha illallah, say Allahu Akbar, say Subhanallah, say Alhamdulillah, ten times after each farad salah. Surah also teaches us that we must prepare ourselves for our accountability by performing salat, paying charity and doing righteous deeds. And verse 31 teaches us about it. Keep making du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and Remember, whenever you ask Allah for the blessings of the worldly life, also add something for Akhira. Ask Allah for guidance. Ask Allah for being steadfast. Make dua for yourself, for your family, and for your children. Do not get dazzled by the worldly gains of the wrongdoer. Surah teaches us, you might feel that they are having a better life, but remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing them. Remember the warning of the Quran, Al-Hakim. The only God worthy of worship is Allah Azza wa Jal. La ilaha illallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on it and make kalma tayyiba our last word. Ameen. Sum Ameen. Now we are in the last section of our study of Surah Ibrahim, Duas. In Surah Ibrahim from verse 35 to 41. There are beautiful du'as. We notice that whenever he alayhi salam, made du'as, he linked it with Allah's praise. He linked it with asking Allah for being righteousness and thankfulness. And he says, Inna Rabbi la dua. Indeed, my Lord is hearer of supplication. In verse 35, he says that when Ibrahim alayhi salam, said, Oh, my Lord, Make this city peaceful and save me and my offsprings from worshipping idols. It is the dua of Hazrat Ibrahim Islam that our heart desire to go to Makkah to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also made dua in verses 40 to 41, which are translated as, O oh my Lord, make me one who performs salat and from my offsprings, our Lord, and accept my invocation. O our Lord, forgive me and my parents and all the believers on the day when the reckoning will be established. Amen. With this, we conclude our study of Surah Ibrahim. Soon we will upload the study of the next chapter, Surah Al-Hijr. Till then, you take care, be happy and spread the happiness. Barakallahu li walakum. Assalamu alaikum.
ورحمة الله وبركاته